It's been just over a week since we got our first hands-on with the Nintendo Switch, and while we might have a clearer picture of what it actually is in our heads, there's still a lot of confusion surrounding what we'll be getting for our money, and what everything actually does. So to try and help you make as much sense of the Switch as humanly possible so you can make an informed purchase come launch day, we've put together this list of 62 little details that you might have missed. Ready? Let's-a go! Let's start with the basics. This is the Nintendo Switch. You can use it to play games on your TV by leaving it plugged into the dock, or you can take it out and play games on the go. The switch between TV mode and portable mode is pretty smooth, as we found out for ourselves at the hands-on event in London. Okay, so first of all, it's extremely impressive how quickly it switched over to the portable. Uh, that was, that seemed almost immediate. This is the Switch logo. As someone pointed out on Twitter, it's not actually symmetrical. Now, the Nintendo Switch is not short on peripherals. More on those in just a second. So to clear things up, here's exactly what you get in the box when you buy a Nintendo Switch. You get one Switch, one dock, two Joy-Con, the plural of Joy-Con is Joy-Con it turns out, two Joy-Con straps so you don't drop and break them, a Joy-Con grip, a HDMI cable, and an AC adapter. That's, that's, that's a plug, I guess. It's a, a plug? All that will set you back £279.99, depending on where you shop. Now let's talk about the Joy-Cons themselves. As we've said, you get two as standard with the Nintendo Switch, a left and a right. Each one has an analog stick, the left one has a D-pad, while the right one has the A, B, X and Y buttons. The right Joy-Con has an infrared camera built in for use with certain games. It also has a reader built in so you can read and write amiibo data. The left has a capture button which you can use at launch to take screenshots while playing games and then share them over social media. Apparently, video capture is coming, but not straight away. Now, you may have caught this weird moment in the presentation. What's all this ice cube nonsense about? Well, it's a feature called HD Rumble, a more responsive kind of vibration designed to give haptic feedback. There's a mini game in 1 2 Switch, for instance, called Ball Count. Exciting name, I know. In Ball Count, you move the Joy Con around and it mimics the feel of small balls rolling around inside. Your objective is to guess how many there are inside. This is the same tech that powers Milk, the disturbing game in which you stare your opponent in the eye while trying to squeeze milk out of a virtual cow. The Joy-Con can be used in a few different configurations, namely clipped onto the side of the Switch itself, one held in each hand, or clipped into the Joy-Con grip. The Joy-Con grip is a cradle that makes the Joy-Con feel more like a conventional controller. There is a version of the Joy-Con grip that will charge your Joy-Con as you play, however this one is not included with the console, you'll need to buy that separately and it will set you back £25. <laughs> Additional Joy-Cons will cost an eye-watering £70 per pair from the official Nintendo store. Ooh. There's also a standalone Pro Controller, but at £60 that's not exactly cheap either. Game over! Both Joy-Con have extra buttons hidden on the inside seam. These are intended to help make more games playable with just one Joy-Con as well as two, so you can try local multiplayer like, say, Mario Kart 8 without having to buy an additional Joy-Con. Now, let's talk about the wrist straps. These are attached to rails that the Joy-Con clip into to prevent it from flying out of your hand and smashing something. These clips incorporate the hidden buttons we talked about and generally make the Joy-Con a bit chunkier to hold. If you think the standard grey is a bit boring, don't worry. The Joy-Con are also being released in neon blue and neon red colours. Now we've covered the controllers you'll be using with the Switch, let's get back to the console itself. The battery life of the Switch in portable mode will vary from game to game, but ranges from 2.5 hours to 6.5 hours. 
However, as well as charging via the dock, you can also charge the Switch with a USB Type-C portable battery. So if you bought one for Pokemon Go last year, you're in luck. Since the Switch is designed to be taken places, you'll be pleased to hear it's not region locked. It's also got a touch screen, though this was referred to as a touch panel in the presentation. It's also worth pointing out that this screen is capacitive like an iPhone screen, rather than resistive like the Wii U or 3DS screen. In layman's terms, that means you probably don't want to drop it, or this might happen. Oh, that's actually my phone. Dropped it on the, dropped it on the concrete. <laughs> While online services will be free when the Nintendo Switch launches, this is only a temporary trial period. You'll need to pay for these services from autumn 2017 onwards. If that's put you off playing games online, you could always try playing locally. Up to eight Switches can be connected via wireless. Just try not to get your Joy-Con mixed up. Software-wise, Nintendo is hoping to recreate the social element that made the Wii so popular with 1-2 Switch, a compilation of mini-games that range from the aforementioned disturbing milk game to a Wild West-style shootout. There's also a game in which one person pretends to wield a katana, while the other has to try and catch the blade with their bare hands. Don't try that in real life, kids. Oh, and there's also one in which you need to pretend to eat sandwiches very fast. 1-2 Switch is just one of the five games available on launch day in the UK. The other games are Super Bomberman R, Just Dance 2017, Skylanders Imaginators, and of course, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Despite the fact it won't be available until spring, Nintendo has also been making a big deal out of ARMS, a boxing game that sees you hold a Joy-Con in each fist, twisting and flailing them to dodge, block, and punch your way to victory. ARMS can be played online, in split-screen, or by linking to a second Switch for local multiplayer. It also features characters with such inspiring names as Springman and Ribbon Girl, which is weird because my parents were going to call me Ribbon Girl if I'd have been born female. Hmm. Splatoon 2 was also shown off during the presentation and at the hands-on event. It makes some modest changes to the original experience, introducing new stages, special moves, and a new weapon. The new weapon is Splat Duelies. These are basically twin paint submachine guns, making up for their modest power with a high rate of fire. When using the Splat Duelies, you can also do a combat roll, just in case you want to feel like a more colourful version of McCree from Overwatch. You can tell Johnny wrote this script, can't you? Because of the accelerometers built into the Joy-Con, you can aim gyroscopically however you're playing Splatoon 2, be that in TV mode or portable mode. While Super Mario Odyssey is one of the most highly anticipated first-party titles for the Nintendo Switch, it sadly won't be available until the end of 2017, meaning we've got almost an entire year to wonder about that hat. Seriously, is Mario's head in its mouth or its bum? We need to know! All in all, Nintendo tells us there are over 80 games in development for the Nintendo Switch, some of which have got full-blown trailers, while others we've only been able to glimpse. In addition to the ones we've already mentioned, we definitely know about Dragon Quest X and XI, they're being released in Japan, we're not too sure about the West yet, Dragon Quest Heroes 1 and 2, Shin Megami Tensei, Project Octopath Traveler, Skyrim, a new game starring Travis Touchdown, <laughs> what the fuck? FIFA, Sonic Mania, Minecraft, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, Steep, Fast RMX, Snipperclips, Has Been Heroes, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Disgaea 5, Poyo Poyo Tetris, Rhyme, Siberia 3, NBA 2K18, Ultra Street Fighter 2, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Rayman Legends, and at least one LEGO title. And that just about does it, except for the most important detail of all. 
Do you actually want one? Let us know your thoughts on the Nintendo Switch in the comments below, along with any details you think we might have missed. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you might want to check out some of our other Switch coverage. Give this video a like and subscribe too if you feel like it. Either way, thanks for watching. Goodbye.